So hello and welcome back. My name is Az and today we're going to be talking about Dorinthia Ironsong, one of the characters in the Welcome to Wraith set uh, of Flesh and Blood. So yeah, if you're new here, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification if you want to be notified of any future sort of Flesh and Blood videos. I'm very, very new to this hobby, very, very new to this game. I haven't even got my hands on any product, but it is my birthday soon, so I will be getting some. Uh, probably a booster box of Welcome to Raids just to sort of start the collection, um, start the collection going. So yeah, this is one of the heroes from Welcome to Raid, and this is Dorinthia Ironsong. Um, so she is a lieutenant in the Hand of Sol, uh, having recently been inducted there. You can go and check out a lore video, so a lore video will follow this video. Um, so definitely um, hit the little bell notification to be notified, because that lore video for Dorinthia is quite a long one. It's quite an in-depth one, so you definitely want to go check that out. But yeah, Dorinthia is um, a sort of... Templar knight sort of style character and she cares about hitting with her weapon. Her weapon is Dawnblade um, and this is the sort of sword that she plucked out of the air in the law. Again, go and check out the video and uh, hit the little bell notification to be notified of that when it comes out. But yeah, going to be going through Dorinthia's cards, what you can expect to find um, in Dorinthia decks and what the play style really is. Um, so, Dorinthia Ironsong. Let's have a look. So, blah, 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 blah. there she is, Dorinthia Ironsong. Luscious, flowing locks. Um, so, yeah, she actually looks like a little bit like, um, she looks a little bit like Evangeline Lilly. Um, if you've seen Lost or uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, she looks a little bit like Evangeline Lilly in the face there, which is all good. So, Dorinthia Ironsong. Again, you can click on the story if you want to go check out the story, but I will have a lore video coming up for that. I've probably said that about four times now, so I'll just shut up about that. But yeah, so uh, Thea, or Dorinthia, is a formidable opponent on the battlefield, a prodigy swords woman who uses both skill and strategy to her advantage, wielding the Dawn Blade. She is graceful and nimble, darting past her opponent's defences to make every attack count. Um, so her sword actually reminds me of Needle. Um... Arya's um, weapon on Game of Thrones. It's like like a fencing sort of weapon by the looks of it. Uh, it's got like the hilt as, as well around the um, around the hand around the handle there. So yeah, it looks pretty awesome. And uh, she's knighted up, ready for combat. So yeah, so uh, what, let's have a look at her hero highlights. What you can come to expect from her cards and her game style. So she's got reprise. So reprise. Um, basically means, well it's a keyword, I'll get to it in a minute, I haven't researched what, what, what Reprise does but I have heard about it. Um, so yeah, uh, Reprise, warriors are masters of close combat, so she is a warrior class. Um, in their prime engaged steel to steel, Reprise is an effect that is turned on when the opponent defends with a card from their hand, capturing the concept of the warrior being engaged. The word Reprise is inspired by the fencing manoeuvre to strike again immediately after being defended, uh, so the fencing sort of... Um, Fencing sort of uh, reference was correct there without even reading it. Um, and uh, yeah, being the repetitive song of a blacksmith metal striking metal. Um, so yeah, she is good at being in combat, attacking and defending, I imagine, and hitting more than once, which is quite good. Uh, you've got the Dawn Blade. So uh, the Dawn Blade uh, is. Um, a masterful swordsman with a special ability to the Dawnblade, Dorinthia's ability uh, alone is able to unlock its power. The centerpiece of the Dorinthia deck, when Dawnblade grows in power, it takes control of the battlefield. Um, so that'll be interesting to see what that card does, but that is the main sort of premise of her deck, is the sword that she wields. Um, so a very, very important weapon to uh, for Dorinthia to have. And then we've got Spread the Light. Take up the mantle of the proud warrior and join the ranks of the Hand of Sol. With the blessings of the light and the faith of your people, it is up to you to protect the innocent and spread the word of Sol across Wraith. You are a representative of Solana, the Hand of Sol, and it is your sworn duty to help others see the light. So again, all that sort of uh, Templars and the Hand of Sol and the induction into that, uh, you can go and check out on the law video when it comes out. Um, or go and just read the story. You can read the story here if you want to read it yourself. But why read it yourself when I can read it for you? with voices, so go and check that out when it comes out. So yeah, uh, we've got Dorinthia Ironsong, this is the uh, the character, 
Dorinthia Iron Song. This is the main hero card. You've got the young hero card and the normal hero card. Uh, this is the first time on this channel we would see uh, both the normal heroes and the young heroes. In the era video, the ninja, um, she didn't actually have a young hero variant. She only had the 20 life uh, hero version. So I don't know what the sort of um, meta game is on that or how, how and even if you can use era. But yeah, go and check out the previous video I did on Era if you're interested in that. So Dorinthia Ironsong, here she is. So flowing red cape, proper superwoman style. Um, so uh, absolutely love that. That's an awesome aesthetic. And the art on these on the on this game is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Definitely captures that raw uh, raw fantasy aesthetic. So yeah, we've got Dorinthia Ironsong. Uh, she's got a nice little golden frame there. So obviously representing the Knights of Soul, which is cool. The Hand of Soul. Um, she has an intellect of four, so she draws up to four cards at the end of the turn, and she has a life total of 40. And uh, she's got a once per turn effect. When your weapon attack hits, you may attack an additional time with that weapon this turn. Um, so that's pretty good. So if your weapon hits, you get an additional attack um, with that weapon again. So as long as you make sure that your attack hits, no matter how much damage you're going through, you're going to be able to attack again with that weapon, which is pretty good. It puts a lot of pressure on the opponents to potentially defend the first one, because if not, they're going, to, they're going to get attacked again, no matter what, if they let their damage through. So it does mean that they sort of do have to commit to that first attack, um, because if they don't, they're going to get hit again. So again, mind games with the opponent, which is always good. Um, so yeah, we've got Dorinthia Iron Song, uh, you've got the Warrior Hero and the Young Hero. Um, so the only difference really between the old and the young is the life total. That's the only difference. So I imagine with Era, if you wanted to play an Era deck, you could just increase the life total to 40 and nobody would nobody would care, I guess. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I'm very, very new to this and hence why I've only got one subscriber. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. So yeah, um, you've got Dorinthia and Dorinthia, so that's cool. So the namesake of her deck, as explained up here, is the Dawn Blade. Um, so this is a uh, warrior weapon, and it's a two-handed sword. So I don't know... Nah, the the flavour there isn't great, is it? Two-handed sword. It's not two-handed, it's one-handed. Fencing is all one-handed, so I don't understand why you could only use one of these but i guess it's because it's very powerful so yeah once per action uh, once uh, once per turn action you can pay a resource point to attack with this weapon uh, if dawnblade hits and it's the second time it has hit this turn put a plus one plus one counter not a plus one plus one counter a plus one power counter on dawnblade um so if it's the second time it's hit it gets a counter so it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing every time you uh hit them with um with a second hit. So not only do they want to be blocking the first one, but they also want to be blocking the second one, because if they don't, Dawnblade is just going to get more powerful and more powerful as time goes on. So again, they're in that dilemma there, is do they want to block the first attack, or do they want to block the second attack? Um, so that is quite an interesting dynamic. And then at the beginning of your end phase, if Dawnblade did not hit this turn, remove all plus one counters from Dawnblade. Um, so if it didn't hit at all, all those counters get removed. Um, so yeah, it's it does reward you for trying to get that second hit in. Um, but um, yeah, the enemies are going to expect that sort of uh, that sort of play. So you do want to try and sort of get round that sort of um, that sort of redundancy. You do want to try and get both attacks in somehow. Um, but yeah, they're going to want to. They're going to want to keep an eye on that Dawnblade. They want to go keep an eye on it because it's going to get out of hand. If they keep if it, if it keeps getting plus one counters um, every single turn, that's going to be hitting for a lot of damage um, just on a just on a normal one resource attack. That is that is pretty good. So yeah, I can imagine. I can, I can see why that is the namesake of the deck, and I'm sure the other cards will sort of blend into this as well. Um, but yeah, a very very powerful weapon to have off the bat. And that's Dawnblade, so uh, Dorinthia's signature weapon, which she plucks out of the air um, during her sort of ceremony. But uh, yeah, that's cool, Dawnblade. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see where the game goes with these classes, because obviously you want to sort of build on the classes you've already have. Like obviously this is a warrior hero, so there's going to be different warrior heroes coming out uh, in the future. But then. 
you do also have to take into consideration people that want to still build Dorinthia Ironsong but without wielding the Dawnblade. Is that going to be possible? Is there going to be cards that support strategies using Dorinthia but without a Dawnblade? Does it make sense? Um, so that's what I'm a little bit reserved on with this game, but it's going to be interesting to see how it develops. And um, I'm really, really, I'm really, really keen to see how how it goes because this game looks awesome. Again, haven't got any product yet, but I will do it at some point because um, my birthday is this month. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be getting some flesh and blood product, that's for sure. I've got too much magic, but let's not talk about that here. Uh, so yeah, Dawnblade, pretty cool card. Uh, now we got um, Brave Forge Bracers. Uh, so Brave Forge Bracers is a warrior equipment arms. So obviously you'd start off with this uh, on your arms. Um, and you've got a once per turn action on there. Uh, I, I should say that you can defend with it as well. It's got two defense. Uh, so once per turn action, you can use a resource point, and it says your next weapon attack this turn gains plus one power, and activate this ability only if a weapon you control has hit this turn, and then you go again. So that's pretty good. So if a weapon, if a weapon you control has hit this turn, you can give it plus one power, and you get to go again, which is great for getting the extra attack, getting the extra hits. And then you've got Battle Worn as well. So if you choose to defend with the Bracers, it gets a minus minus one counter. Was that minus two? Minus one counter on it when its combat chain closes. Yeah, so you can use it to defend to, um, to power, a two power attack, or you can use it to sort of negate um, attacks as you would normally do when you're using defense. But obviously it does get a minus one counter as all equipment does so far that I've sort of come across. So... But yeah, that once per turn action for a resource is pretty good. Your next weapon attack, this turn gains plus one. Activate its ability only if a weapon you control has already hit this turn. Go again. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Next we've got a Refraction Bolters. So a nice little pair of Greaves here. Uh, it's a Warrior Equipment Legs and it's uh, one defense. When your weapon attack hits, you may destroy Refraction Bolters. If you do, the attack gains go again. Um, so that's that's pretty good as well. A lot, a lot of cards that I've come across so far, go again is something that you you would love to see because you just get to take more actions, do more things, attack twice, all that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, again, just another way of hitting people more times in this deck, and that's what you want to do because every time you hit something... Um, if it's the second time your Dawnblade is hit, your Dawnblade is going to get more and more powerful. So you just want to be stacking second attacks in with uh, Dorinthia. So, yeah, Refraction Bolters, great piece of uh, equipment for armor purposes. Uh, it can only defend against one one power. Uh, that's about it. But then it's got a great sort of... Um, a great sort of ability on there to just get some redundancy in the go-again attacking, which is nice. Uh, so then we've got a warrior action. Uh, we've got Steel Blade Supremacy. Uh, so this can be pitched for one resource point. It can be um, used or played for one resource point, and it can be used as a defense for three. And it says Dorinthia Specialization, so you have to be using Dorinthia to be able to use this card. And it says until end of turn, target weapon gains plus two power, and it says whenever this weapon hits, draw a card, and you get to go again. So that's brilliant. So Dorinthia, obviously because she is from blacksmith background, her sort of Iron Song name uh, throughout her family was, you know, they're, they're known for being the blacksmiths of, um, of the town. Um, she is just brilliant with weapon cards, and it goes to show here. So it says, again, into the end of turn, target weapon gets plus two power and says whenever this weapon hits, draw a card. That is, uh, that's pretty good. So it cares about what your weapons are doing rather than what your other stuff's doing. So, yeah, uh, very, very reliant on the on the weapon, very, very reliant on the Dawn Blade itself. So it'll be interesting to see whether uh, there's cards that have been released now uh, in sort of Arcane Rising or Monarch or any, any of the other sets that sort of disable weapon attacks uh, because that will really, really hurt Dorinthia if she cannot use weapon abilities or use weapons to attack. Uh, that could really, really hinder her by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, Steel Blade Supremacy. Very, very good. Dorinthia Specialization. Then we've got uh, Glint the Quicksilver. So this art on here is the one that's at the top of the page, as you can see. One with the flowing locks. Uh, we've got Glint the Quicksilver. So this can be pitched for three resource points, and it can be played for zero, so it's free. Uh, it can be used as a defense. 
as well for three, but it is a warrior attack uh, reaction card, so you can only use this after you've already attacked. And it says target weapon attack gains go again, so that's so that's pretty good. And then you've got a reprise on there as well. So if the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand, this chain link, draw a card. So that's pretty good. So reprise, if they have defended with a card from their hand, this chain link, draw a card. So I guess that's what that means. Um, it just means that if the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand, you do something. I think that's what reprise means. I'm just reading the next one very, very quickly. Yeah, so if they defended with a card from their hand, you get to do something else, basically. Um, so that's that's pretty good. It's um, obviously relying on that. Uh, you're attacking, they're defending. If they defend, you get something. So again, it, in their mind, they're like, do I should I defend this attack? Because they're going to get that triggered ability if I do. So should I just let this attack go through so they don't get the benefit? So yeah, it's good. All these little things in this game, uh, all these little decisions that you have to make really does make for a very very cool and uh, engaging game that's that that's for sure so glint the quicksilver very very cool um then we got a singing steel blade um so this is a warrior attack reaction uh, it can be pitched for two resource and it costs one resource to play and it's again a dorinthia specialization so you have to be using dorinthia to access this card and it says target weapon attack gains plus one power so you play this warrior attack reaction when you attack you you then play your attack reaction uh, i don't know uh, the order of which attack and defense reactions go because I haven't actually played a game of this yet I'm just going through the cards and stuff um, But I'm pretty sure when you attack they defend with a card Then you can choose to play an attack reaction and then they can choose to play a defense reaction um, Before the chain link ends um, So what does it say reprise? Yep So if the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand this chain link search your deck for an attack reaction card Banish it face up, then shuffle your deck. You may play it this chain link. So that's pretty good. Um, it just gives you some redundancy in the chain link attack that you're actually using because you not only get the plus one power from the target weapon attack that you're currently doing, but you then get to reprise if they defend. So if they defend with a card from their hand, they then have to um, worry about the next warrior attack reaction card that you could potentially use um banish when you banish it so yeah that's pretty good it's a lot of um manipulating the combat steps in this particular deck uh, and i think that's uh awesome flavor because you know dorinthia is a warrior sort of paladin that loves to be in the thick of combat so all of these sort of attack reactions and doing stuff in combat um reprise all that sort of stuff is um is very thematic and i think that's what this game is getting bang on is the um, is the th uh, the theming of each character? Um, so each character I've come across so far is just awesome, and this is just the second character out of many. So definitely keep uh, up to date with the channel because I'm going to be going into lots of different things about lots of different characters that come out. So yeah, this is the place for it. Um, so yeah, Singing Steel Blade is awesome. Then we've got uh, Iron Song Determination. Uh, so this is a warrior action card. It can be pitched for two resource and it costs zero resource to play. Uh, a warrior action card can be used as a defense for three uh, as well. And it says target weapon gains plus one power and dominate until end of turn. And then you, and then you get to go again. Um, so I don't know what dominate does. Um, I don't have a clue what dominate does. So I cannot um, explain that to you. But it sounds good. Um Let's have a look. Uh, blah, 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 blah. The only card in the Welcome to Rave that gives a weapon dominate, making some of Dorinthia's hit effects like Steel Blade Supremacy extra th extra threatening. So it's the only card that gives a weapon dominate. So I don't know what dominate does, um, which is a shame. So correct me in the comments if you're watching what dominate does. Again, I'm, so, I'm very much a noob to this game. Um, but yeah, so plus, uh, target weapon gets plus one uh, power and dominate into the end of turn. Then you get to go again on that as well, which is which is pretty good. Um, so I imagine dominate quite good. Let's just let's just have a look, see what dominate does, shall we? Dominate uh, flesh and blood. You're learning with me as as we play. So here we go. Uh,
Where is it then? Uh, keywords, dominate, there we go. So when an attack has dominate, it represents the attack being particularly hard to defend against. When defending against attack with dominate, the defender can only defend with, with the attack uh, only defend the attack with a single card from their hand. This includes playing defense reactions from their hand, but not from the arsenal. A great way to get around dominate is to defend with a card from hand, then play a defense reaction from arsenal. Um, so they can only defend with a singular card um, with dominate. So that's good. So again, it restricts their their ability to defend against uh, big attacks. Uh, and again, like the game said here, the best way to defend against a card with Dominate is to play a card from your hand and then play also a card from your Arsenal as a defence reaction card. So um, the Arsenal is just like a, a separate part of your hand that you can use, um, but you can't actually play cards. Um, there's, there's a weird rule. There's a real weird ruling behind it, but I can't remember what it is. But yeah, that's a, that's a good that's a good idea to to use defense reaction from Arsenal to try and get around dominate because dominate only allows you to defend with one card in your hand, so that's good. So Dorinthia cares about getting their attacks through and just making their hard to defend against. So that's uh, so that's good. That's cool. Uh, Iron Song determination, and then we had route. Um, as well, uh, so this is yeah, this can be pitched for one resource. It can be played for two resource, and it's a warrior attack reaction. It can be used as a defense of three. A target weapon gains three attack, and then it has reprise. If the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand, this chain link, you may return target non-equipment defending card to its owner's hand. So that's quite good. You may return target non-equipment defending card to its owner's hand. Um, non-equipment defending card to its owner's hand. Yeah, so I guess uh, a target non-equipment defending card would be something that they've used as a defence. You can return that to their hand. Um, so that's good, again, for getting through um, defences. So if they've played a defence card from their hand as an attack reaction, you can then play Route which gives your your weapon attack plus three, but then if they've reprised, which they probably would have done, um, because you then play this, you'd return the card that they've used as their defense back to their hand and get through uh, for potentially additional three damage on that sort of chain link. So that is a cool card. Again, just messing around with people's defenses, doing a lot of sort of reactions and defense reactions and attack reactions in the combat step, in the chain link step. Um, is where Dorinthia wants to do a lot of her work is in the thick of battle, it seems. Um, so yeah, that is Dorinthia's sort of um, sort of quick how to use uh, insight into um, Dorinthia. And um, she looks pretty cool. Uh, I don't know, again, how... Um, how much these characters are still being played in the game, but I guess they probably are still being played in the game because there isn't many characters at the moment to use. So, yeah. Um, I just can't wait to see where this game goes, to be honest. There's so much things that could be done, uh, and it's just refreshing to see a new TCG that is making waves. Um, so, yeah, it looks really, really good. Let me just change the camera. So, yeah, it looks really, really good. And uh, I can't wait to get my hands on some Welcome to Raid stuff just to sort of build my collection up a little bit. Um, but um, yeah, there's so many so many sets coming out for it. There's um, the Arcane Rising. There's the um, Crucible of War. There's also the new one as well, Monarch, which is coming out I think at the end of the month or something. So um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. And I've already registered uh, on the Flesh and Blood channel as well as a content creator. Uh, as well as all my details to enter into tournaments as well. So I'm going to start, kind of start trying to do that when I can, especially to find the local game store that does that in the UK. So, uh, yeah, Dorinthia, cool character, cares about doing stuff in the combat, in the chain link step, and just manipulating combat, which is uh, everything a warrior should be doing. So can't wait to see more. Big thumbs up from me. And we'll see you on the next one. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit the little bell notification if you want to be notified of any future videos. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.